Welcome, Bike. Today we're talking about, I think, nine players, maybe eight, maybe ten, depending on how saucy we want to get in here. Uh, dudes that are just skyrocketing up my rankings right now. Some of them have great logic behind them. Some of them really don't. You know, this this time of the year, things you have so much input. You have so much coming into your brain that, like, it's you move around players in their rankings quite often. And I'm not someone who takes these, like, Twitter highlight clips and moves guys up because they're, you know, they're running around against a six-string cornerback in shorts. Not my type of thing, so you won't really hear that out of me today, probably like four or five times. But these are nine dudes that, for one reason or another, like Alvin Kamara, first guy up on this list, is moving up rankings. Sometimes from training camp hype, sometimes because of outside forces slash sources. But these are dudes that, if you're drafting on underdog right now, you're doing best ball teams, these are guys you should be targeting a little bit earlier than they're going right now, because I think within a month from now, they will be going way earlier. So do yourselves a favor and tuck your shirts in. Stop yelling. Flex your traps. All right, so let's talk about Alvin Kamara. Right now, I have him inside my top 25 running back rankings. That e Even that might be a little bit too low. What we have to address first is the suspension. So he gets handed down a three-game suspension. I think most people were expecting a four to six game, so this is probably best-case scenario. And what I think the most ideal part of this for Alvin Kamara owners or people that want to draft him or still think he's got some juice left in the tank, which I, you know, I don't, I don't see a reason why he wouldn't. This coming before the season is best case scenario because I think the biggest threat to his workload is Kendra Miller because Kendra Miller is a very talented running back. But in the beginning of the year, like the first couple games, because he's out for the first three games, they're going to ride Jamal Williams because he's the vet and because they trust him. If they were playing throughout the year and he got suspended in like week eight or week 10 or something like that, like they handed down the suspension way later into the year. By that time, Kendra Miller probably carved out a role in this backfield. And most people have probably realized that he's a little bit more talented than Jamal Williams on a carry-by-carry -carry basis, and you never know what that kind of role is going to lead to. You remember Alvin Kamara's rookie year. So if it happened later on into the year, I'd be a lot more nervous about him, not that you would know that that was coming because – it would have happened later in the year. But if that had happened, Kamara is suspended, you know, week nine through 12 or whatever, week nine through 11, Kendra might step in as the workhorse during that period of time. And then I don't know if Kamara gets his job back or I don't know if Kamara gets a workhorse roll back at that point of the season. But because this is happening early, Jamal Williams will be the one A. Probably not. It'll probably be a one-two punch where it's mostly Jamal Williams because they trust him. They trust vets early on in the season. This always happens. Younger players tend to develop more into roles as the season progresses. So by the time week three hits, I don't expect Kendra to have had a massive workload, and I think Kamara will step right back into where he was prior. Now, obviously, Jamal Williams is going to be a dude here who scores touchdowns, who's probably banging on the goal line, and I don't expect Kendra to go to zero touches when Kamara gets back. But what I am kind of excited about about is, is Kamara's been so electric in the passing game throughout his career, and they just completely got off that once Drew Brees left. They didn't have any check down guys between James Winston and Andy Dalton and Taysom Hill and all this bullshit. So his fantasy production really took a dip because these quarterbacks were not check down guys. Now, I'm not saying Derek Carr like lives and breathes and dies by the check down, but we saw Josh Jacobs just come away with a career year. We've seen Josh Jacobs do it, and Kamara is a much better pass catching back. Derek Carr will throw the ball to Alvin Kamara. For the last, you know, month or two, Kamara was a 10th round pick, started moving down to the 9th round, started moving down to the 8th round, and now where I'd be looking to target him is in that 6th, 7th round range. He is my RB25. He's like right in between that range of like where DeAndre Swift gets there and the other guys that I already feel comfortable. The David Montgomery's and dudes like that. So Kamara's the first guy up on this list. The next running back up on this list is Alexander Madison. Now I did this video, this full video breakdown last week, which I highly suggest y'all go watch. I was comparing dudes of last year, right? Like who is this year's Russell Wilson? Who is this year's Josh Jacobs? For this year's Jamal Williams, I labeled it Alexander Madison because it was just kind of like right place, right time. Jamal Williams didn't need to be super talented in order to have the fantasy day that he or the fantasy year that he had last year. I don't think Alexander Madison does either. And the more I just look at what that depth chart is and the less we hear about anybody else in that backfield outside of Alexander Madison, the more comfortable I feel with him getting 15 to 17 touches per game and probably almost all of the goal line work. And that's why I'm excited about him 
him because I think there's a really, really good chance that even if he doesn't average like more than 40 yards per carry, even if he doesn't end up catching 60 passes, he's probably a decent bet to score eight, nine, 10 touchdowns on the ground and one or two through the air because this offense is going to move. They got a bad pass defense. The other teams are going to put up a lot of points and they're going to score a lot of points, meaning they're going to be in a lot of red zone opportunities and goal line opportunities. I think that's where Madison will kind of bang in. And he's just always been really, really productive when he's gotten the chance to be the workhorse. There was like one game two years ago, which was in the fantasy playoffs. So everyone's got that sour taste in their mouth about who Alexander Madison was for one game, but he's been excellent outside of that. He can, he can do all three things. He has surprisingly good breakaway run rate, surprisingly good juke rate. Like he is a little bit more elusive, a little bit more explosive, and just a, a little bit better of a running back than I kind of gave him credit for. We've never seen him do it over the long span of the season, which is the reason why he goes in like the fifth or sixth round of drafts. There is that question mark. This kind of opportunity, the guy replacing Dalvin Cook, I feel like a few years ago, he would be a mid third round pick, but we've kind of learned our lesson that longevity actually matters and proving that you can handle a workload matters. But I think the upside here based on taking him in the fifth or sixth round is something I'm super willing to invest into. And he keeps moving up my rankings. So right now I got Alexander Madison at RB 20, but I'm going to keep moving him up week by week. The less we hear from all of these other backs. And if you're interested in the rankings, they are available right now through our draft guide. That's the only spot you can get it. And you can get the draft guide in one of two spots. The cheapest and the easiest way to get it is by signing up on Underdog Fantasy. The app is linked right down below. And if you deposit $10 or more onto the app using our code, get on the app, download it, put BDGE in the promo code slot when you deposit $10 for the first time. Not only are they going to double what you put on the platform, and we're going to be doing pick them and gambling on the website all season long, so you might as well get on there now, but we're going to email you out the draft guide absolutely free once you sign up it should email to you within 30 minutes or so but you can get it at full price on bdge.shop if you don't want to for whatever reason go through underdog fantasy so underdog fantasy promo code bdge ten dollars or bdge.shop at full price it's got all of our rankings one qb super flex positional rankings our must draft lists our all fade lists all those dudes so you will see the rise of alexander madison as the months go by and the last running back up on this list is brian robinson out there in washington there's been a lot of hype about Antonio Gibson for like the fourth straight year. This is more of like, I think Brian Robinson deserves a little bit more credit. Like he got a lot of run. He got shot in the preseason after he had won the starting role from Gibson. He became the starter in preseason in the summer and they were really excited about him. Then obviously he got shot and he came back a few weeks later, probably wasn't hundred percent the majority of last year, but they still used him and used him and used him. And there's like three key points I kind of want to get across here. Well, actually, I guess four. We'll start with the fourth one that I just thought of. Antonio Gibson sucks. He's horrific on the ground. Like there's just no arguing against that. It's cool that he was athletic in college and shit like that. And we wanted to see what he became at the NFL level, but he's just not a good runner. Brian Robinson has an 85th percentile weight adjusted speed score. Brian Robinson was top 18 in juke great last year top 18 in terms of just overall elusiveness at the running back position and do not forget he caught 35 passes his final year at Alabama like he's not a great pass catcher but he is more than just some dude that you hope catches the ball when you throw it to him like he can be a three down guy there and you're getting him in the ninth or tenth round who I, I think he's almost guaranteed to be the starter there like Gibson's already talking about how he wants to play the JD McKissick role like imagine that's the bar you set for yourself as a running back like I think I could play the JD McKissick role it's like fam I think we need to get you into therapy get that self-confidence up a little bit but B-Rob coming into this year not coming out of the hospital full strength ahead I think we're all underestimating B-Rob a little bit and I was kind of guilty of this the last few months but I'm, I'm, I'm very much on board with Brian Robinson I keep I keep grabbing him in the ninth 10th, 11th round. And again, all these drafts that I throw up on the screen are underdog drafts. You can draft on best ball right now, $3 drafts to enter for second, third place wins money on them. So use our code and they'll double whatever you put onto the platform. Put down 10, you'll have 20. You could do six of these drafts, but I've been grabbing Brian Robinson like every time, ninth, 10th, 11th round. Let's move over to some pass catchers. Drake London is the first guy up on this list. I'm going to be honest. Alex, everyone knows like his metrics last year as a rookie were phenomenal. He was really, really good. His target share was elite. He was up in like 29.5% uh, target share, which is like top five in the NFL. For a rookie, that's crazy to command those level of targets already. I think the offense overall will have a lot more stability. Am I worried about Desmond Ritter? Yeah, a little bit. Kyle Pitts, of course, the other elephant in the room. My take on this is London's going to be the alpha there. Pitts and London will work great together, but when all is said and done, like three years down the line, London's going to be the dude 
that's putting up the numbers. I mean, they both will, but London will be the dude that ascends to the elite player at his position. As a Falcons fan, I feel really confident in that. So I'm in on London. Like these are the types of guys when they break out as rookies, when they play really, really, really well, you want to start drafting them as they're entering their prime, as they're entering year two, year three, year four, because that's when those breakouts happen. Drake London, I love. Brandon Ayuk, I also love. I've thrown a lot of love at George Kittle over the last couple months. But I've really been varying my picks on the San Francisco 49ers pass catching group. I'm out on Debo completely. Where he's going, he's still going like at the end of the third round. And Ayuk's a middle fifth round pick. George Kittle's an end of fifth, early sixth round pick. But Brandon Ayuk, and I've talked about this before in videos, I got people that got people in the 49er locker room. Everybody in the locker room knows that Ayuk is like that dude at wide out. Everybody knows how good of a route runner he is. Everyone knows he's like the alpha on the outside. So I just have to imagine, I think Purdy will be back. I think Purdy will be fine for week one. And I think with Purdy under center and this offense having the stability, I think Ayuk finally has his like breakout, breakout season this year. And Ayuk finishes as the top 15 fantasy wide receiver. So I have London and Ayuk back to back at wide receiver 21 and 22. And I think I can make the case to jump them even higher all the way up to probably 19 and 20. And that move might happen very soon. Now, I've got two rookie wide receivers that I'm I'm starting to get really, really high on. One of them I've already been high on, and that's Michael Wilson of the Arizona Cardinals. I don't want to fucking hear anybody was higher on him earlier than I was, but the training camp reports out of Arizona are phenomenal about Michael Wilson. Like Every single day I'm seeing tweets about this kid, and the point I made early on, as soon as he got drafted, was like, you look at this wide receiver room. Michael Wilson's 6'2", 215. Hollywood Brown, Greg Dortch, Rondell Moore, those dudes are tiny. If you stack them up on top of each other, they look like Michael Wilson. Hollywood would have to eat Greg Dortch, and then that person would have to eat Rondell Moore, and then you get Michael Wilson. And Wilson, for his size, is such a good route runner. Also got like wildly underrated third round draft capital. If there was any other receivers that went off in the third round, people would be way more excited about it. Michael Wilson, I'm, I'm getting unnecessarily high on him and he's been like my 17th 18th round pick in underdog drafts almost every draft he's the lesser known rookie wide receiver the other one i'm getting higher on i guess i, I guess quentin johnson and zay flowers are both guys that i'm getting higher on zay flowers for the obvious reason that rashad bateman's been out i just have no faith whatsoever in obj so zay flowers is the guy that gets consistent hype out of out of camp and is the only one that consistently stays on the field so like we're excited about the offense but like we need to know what pieces are going to be in the offense and right now zay flowers feels like the only consistent every single day so Flowers is a guy that I wasn't necessarily high on just from a redraft perspective because it was weird how it was going to shake out. We didn't really know, but I feel way more confident in him right now. Quentin Johnson's the other one I like, and I don't expect a lot from Quentin Johnson over the first half of the year, but I have a feeling that he will have like a second half of the year Chase Claypool or T. Higgins type stretch down the second half of the year. I listened to the Athletic Podcast last week where they had a Chargers beat reporter on and they were talking about what the offense looks like this year and it's going to be like the opposite of what it was last year how Justin Herbert's average depth of target five yards downfield and they were saying how basically every time Herbert gets asked like what's going to be the difference this year with Kellen Moore coming into OC and Herbert's like I'm going to be taking shots downfield like I'm going to be throwing the fucking ball and that might equate to a lot of Mike Williams hype which I also am getting a little bit higher on now too because he fits that same mold but Quentin Johnson I could see him week eight week nine onward starting to be on the field for 60% of the snaps, 70% of the snaps, and like really become a big time playmaker for this team. So I like all those dudes. You want to talk about another rookie, Dalton Kincaid. I just, I just challenge you. I challenge you. He, he moved. I get it. Like no one likes rookie tight ends, but you just, if you haven't watched this guy play, if you haven't watched this film, you don't understand. He doesn't move like a tight end. All these other tight ends. I get it. Like I like Laporta. I like Michael Mayer. I like all those dudes. They all move the same though. They're all like stocky tight ends who can move well. They're tough dudes, contested catch dudes, can run good routes. They have good like weight adjusted speed scores, but their like agility, their their side to side lateral movement is fine. Duncan Kincaid's is special. It's it's special for the tight end position. Go watch two games of tape on Dalton Kincaid and you will understand what I'm talking about. I just don't want to be on the wrong side of history when it comes to Kincaid. I've got a kink and it's for Kincaid. We've got a teammate duo. I've been really high on Amari Cooper all offseason and I still am. I'm still grabbing him at the end of the third round. But the Deshaun Watson, Elijah Moore duo is starting to get me fired up. I'm expecting Deshaun Watson to be far closer to his 2020 year than his 2022 year. He's not all of a sudden just a shitty quarterback. A lot of traumatic shit in his life and don't fuck make this political I'm not siding with him I'm just saying from a human standpoint he had a lot of emotions running through him where I can't imagine he could 
focus at all on football. It took a huge toll on him, and we're looking at it from fantasy. He will be way more comfortable this year going onto the field. The offensive line is great. The weapons are great. Deshaun Watson moving up the draft board, super comfortable drafting him as a top 10 quarterback. Elijah Moore, one of my favorite late single-digit round picks right now. He was electric down the stretch as a rookie for the New York Jets. Needed a little bit of change of scenery. Now he's got a really good quarterback throwing him the ball. Really like Elijah Moore. And I won't lie, I won't lie, I took my very first share of Justin Ross today. The Twitter hype made me have a little bit of FOMO. I've never been a Justin Ross guy. I was against him coming out of college. I get it. Yeah, this, this is the problem with dudes like Justin Ross is like, the industry is so saturated now. Like everybody's just like, oh, I, I make fantasy football content or whatever, which is cool. I admire it. I like it. I like people putting themselves out there. But most people just do the bare minimum. And they'll be like, oh, my God, Justin Ross broke out at age 18. And then they'll literally just, like, recite that stat for the next 10 years. So if he if he never hits, it's like, well, it wasn't my fault. Like, I just looked at the fucking breakout age. It's like, shut shut your mouth. You know what I mean? He didn't do shit after his freshman year. By the way, he was playing with like one of the best quarterbacks in college football history in Trevor Lawrence. So he had the big freshman year and literally he's just been injury riddled, couldn't produce, didn't play at all. Like I'm just I'm just for as much as me yelling about I just took Justin Ross today. Fuck this. I'm out on Justin Ross. Never mind. He's off this list. If I were able to make waiver wire moves on underdog, I would drop him for my team right. So what I'd suggest you go do now is go watch that video I mentioned earlier about breaking down this year's Jamal Williams and Josh Jacobs and the Philadelphia Eagles and the Seattle offense, all that sheesh. I will link that down below. Most importantly, if you really want to support the brand, go download the Underdog app, underdogfantasy.com, or the link to the app will be down below. You can use either web or mobile, don't matter. And when you deposit on there, $10 or more for the first time, use promo code BDGE. They're going to double whatever you put down. You'll be able to do best ball drafts with us if you join our Discord for free, and you'll get our draft guide emailed over to you for free. It's everything you need for your fantasy football drafts. I love you. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. We're doing videos like this every damn day, and hit the thumbs up button while you're down there. See you tomorrow.